I've always heard about, you know, Super Bowl bets that you can make on who's going to get the coin toss and who's going to get the first touchdown. And oh, right. I've even heard about bets that you can make about the national anthem, like how long the national anthem will be. <laughs> That's and, right. Yeah. But I did not know there were halftime performance bets. Have you heard of this? Like you're figuring out if someone's going to be exposed or no, like fall off the stage when they've got a group of performers like this, like uh, you can bet on who's going to go first. Okay. Uh, you can also bet on, will they team up for at least one song? Will they serve up an unreleased song? Will Eminem get political? You know, is Snoop Dogg going to smoke on the stage? Will there be nudity? You're really hooked on that nudity, huh? Well, it happened that one time. Remember that? Yeah, but that was like decades ago. Can we say that? A decade ago? Longer? Uh, longer than that. It's almost two decades, Was it right? 2001? Which would be 20 years ago. Woof. I don't even want to think about that. Janet Jackson's Super Bowl. 2001? No. 2004. 2004. I was going to say, it was out of college. Yeah. Should have thought about that. You know, I had a really nice TV back then. And it really just looked like she was wearing a pasty. It was not that offensive. but No, it wasn't. But whatever. I know. And we could go on and on about how Justin Timberlake came out of that whole thing unscathed. And mm-hmm. Janet Jackson was like, yeah, blackballed. And yeah, there's now at least one, maybe two documentaries about it. I think so. They were pretty recent. So I think so. I, I would think that'd be a valid bet. You know, will there be new to thee? I don't know. These are all old performers. I, but with the exception of Kendrick Lamar, who's going to get in their skivs? Who's going to show it off? I wouldn't bet on Dr. Dre dropping it. No. I don't know. So, yeah, I'm more uh, thinking of the bets of, like, okay. is Snope going to smoke on stage or I mean, I'm getting political. But there actually are bets right now. Uh, Mary J. Blige, if you're thinking about placing any of these bets, uh, Mary J. Blige is the big favorite to open the show. And Eminem is favored to close the show. That seems to make sense. Yeah. Odds on uh, Snoop smoking. Those odds are more than two to one against it happening. Oh, against it happening. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Wagers.com also says odds of minus 140, which means you'd have to bet $140 to get back $100 if Eminem gets political. And unreleased song, I just don't see him going with an unreleased song. What do you think? No, no, nope. I don't think so. I'm just, yeah. I'm curious how much silence there will be due to the muting of profanity. Do you think they're going to mute it? Well, that's what typically happens is they just, it's, the audio just cuts out, you know, when the curse words start happening. They don't have to edit themselves. NBC edits them. Or whoever. I'm just saying that's what's happened in the past at other events okay. where people are performing and they don't self-censor is that the network just sloppily censors it instead. Oh, so, I would think that they'd make them self-censor and be ready at the censor button. Well, you, you're going to make them do that? I mean... I, I figured that's partly... If you want this major stage, you have to be willing to censor yourself. Well, that's easy said enough ahead of time, but once you're on stage... Right. And muscle memory and... Let the F-bombs fly, Kate. The yep. bombs fly. That's true. And then the whole show will sound like maybe. Thanks. Have a good night. Have a good night. Except for Mary J. Blige. Oh, yeah. Mary J. Blige. She should be able to get through a song without cursing a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. She'll be good. She's fantastic. Are you going to place any bets? I don't know. I like the national anthem bets. Like, will it be long? Are they going to mess up? I don't know who's singing the national anthem yet. Usually they announce that closer to the game time. Hmm. Right? I don't know. Let me look it up. Uh, Super Bowl 2022. 56. 56. Mm-hmm. Who is singing the national anthem? Blah, blah. Maybe. Yeah, you might be right. List of national anthem performers at the Super Bowl. And TBD. TBD, Kate. Good call. Yep. Yep. Last year is Jasmine Sullivan and Eric Church. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I guess typically you don't really remember 
the national anthem person. Unless it's Whitney Houston. Well, I mean, like what year it happened in. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Whitney Houston's national anthem. It's one of the best ones. With the Florida Orchestra. Directed by Zsa Zsa Ling. 1991. Wow. All right. Uh, no bet- bets on like, okay, how many injuries are going to happen? Or Yeah, this is mostly about uh, the halftime show, but I'm sure there are those bets out there. How many interceptions or how many helmet to helmets or penalties or. Yeah. I mean, are you even a betting man in the in the first place? No. No. Nope. Not really my style. I mean, I've, I've speculated in the stock market before, which I don't recommend. And I did OK, yeah. but uh, no, no gambling. You? I don't. Penny slots? No. Okay. No, but I I know a lot of people who do. And I might be related to some of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's all the more specific you need to get. I know. But when we're watching a game that I don't really care about, I'm like, who are we rooting for? <laughs> Matt, you know, yesterday we were talking about video games. And if you're having a hard time passing a level... You suggested turning the sound off of the video game, right? Yes, because, and to clarify, say, play the video games with sound on until you just run into a wall and can't clear a level, then turn off the volume, and then you'll no longer have the panic-inducing music, potentially, that might be throwing you off. Well, I shared that tip with Ellie, who is playing Splatoon. Okay. And we were... In the car, and she was complaining about not being able to get through such and such. And I was like, well, I was just talking to Matt. He said, turn down the volume. And she's like, I've already got the volume turned down because you hate the music. I'm like, well, (laughs) shoot. Good try, though. I'm out of ideas. Well, that's so sweet of her to have the sound. Is she playing Splatoon still or something else at that point? Splatoon. In the car? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess there's a solo campaign there. Because an online, do you know there's an online component to it? Um. I don't, but I hope we never use it. Why? Because I don't want her playing online. Well, you don't hear the other people talking. There's no chat or anything. I don't want her playing. I mean, but then you're playing. Then there's contact, right? What what do you mean? I mean, the people that you're playing can like message you. No, no, no. Yeah. No, Nintendo just really kind of has it locked down. The online gameplay. Because I played the original Splatoon quite a bit, mm-hmm. and I mean, never once you're just thrown into a, like a a random group of four people. Oh, it's four on four. Hmm. Yeah, paintball kind of kind of game. But yeah, I totally forgot. I, for, I forgot. Yeah, there's a solo campaign there. But so she says no. And then obviously she's like, I already got the sound uh, down. Yeah. So Matt needs to come up with a new tip for me to advance. I think that's where she was like, "What else you got?" And I'm like, "Well." That's all I've got. But thanks for keeping the volume down. <laughs> I just love that I gave you what I thought was actually pretty good practical advice to say, turn the volume down to cheat. I did too. I mean, to turn the volume down so that you can more likely be victorious. And then you're like, oh, I could use that so I don't have to listen to that stupid game soundtrack. Everybody wins. I wasn't going to go there. I was really saying it to suggest to help. Oh, okay. But she already had the volume down. So loved it. Oh, that's great. Smart girl. Little Nintendo Switch in the back uh, in the back seat. Front seat, but yeah. Front seat. Either way. Yeah. Either way. Technology. I probably wouldn't hear it if she was in the back seat as much, but she was smart. She knows her mom doesn't like it. <laughs> and so she told you, so she goes, oh, man, I can't get past this part. Bleh. Yeah. And then you go, Matt says if you turn the volume down, you might be able to get past the level you're stuck on. I said, Matt and I were just talking about this today, and he suggested blah, 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 blah. And she goes, yeah, I've already got the volume down because you hate it. I'm like, okay. Well, like, clearly you knew the volume. Like, you, you could not hear the game. You were just saying, like, generally speaking, right? Right, right. And she was saying, still can't get past it. I'm like, well, give it time. But keep the volume down and try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's not switch the sound back on. Thank you. Okay. Womp womp. They fight over it at all? The girls fight over it at all? Sometimes. But not, I mean, uh, they're not 
perfect about it by any means. But there, over the weekend, there was a little bit of like, well, she had it. And I'm like, why don't you both play? Well, because I want to play a one person game. I was like, ugh. Should buy a second Nintendo Switch, Kate. Yeah, Matt. <laughs> I'm made of money. Why not? See? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Just write the check. Just pay for it. Do it. Nah, put that on the credit card. Ah, that's it. Charge it. But no, you want to pay off the credit card. P- pay the credit card off every month. You get the points, but then you don't have to pay that ridiculous interest rate. Right. I recommend it. And you get to build a line of credit. There you go. I feel like we're lecturing the teens right now. Or at least maybe I feel like I'm lecturing the teens. I did not learn any of that as a teen. Oh, did you have bad yeah. credit card debt? Oh, not bad, but like I had no clue what I was getting myself into. I just thought, oh, if I sign up for this, you'll give me like such and such a discount on gas. Fantastic. It's dumb. But I knew all about parallelograms because that's important to learn in high school. Wow. Have you seen that? Have you seen that meme where it's like, <laughs> I'm so glad I learned about taxes in high school or I'm so glad I learned about parallelograms because, you know, parallelogram season. Nobody talks to you about taxes. I don't know. Parallelogram season. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, um, it's that time of year. That's a good point. And I know people will often get annoyed when they hear the parallel uh, parallelogram mm-hmm. s- season ads on the radio. I know. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah, no, I, such a hard word to say. I mean, it's <laughs> got to know your parallelograms, Kate. Do you? Ge- geometry. Yes. Come on. You can be a big fancy scientist and pay off that credit card debt. You know? I missed the connection between geometry, scientists, and credit card. Go ahead. Oh, because you would know geometry, be a successful scientist, and be able to pay your credit card bill? You need to know geometry to be a scientist? Uh, probably like if you're a rocket scientist or something like that. Okay. 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 You know, you got to calculate and get out a compass and protractor and stuff. Okay. Okay. Cur- curvature of the earth and all. I think when you said scientist, I went with medical science and I'm like, I don't think okay. geometry is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Or engineering. Like the gonna, math you need here. <laughs> like engineering, architecture. I think that. Yes. Yes. Those things would come in handy for. Yes. That said, I do think we probably should be teaching financial literacy in high school. I agree with that 100%. Yes. Financial education. But whether you're replacing math and geometry with it, I don't know about that part. I mean, it could be a subset of math. Calculate the interest rate. Calculate the thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Correct. You'll be lighting on fire by not paying off your credit card. Correct. I would much rather have spent my time on that than geometry. Knowing that I was not going into the engineering, rocket science, no. architecture fields. Want, want. And I feel like my guidance counselor in high school should have known that too. <laughs> would they try to convince yeah. you to do it or something? <laughs> no, but like, oh, you definitely are going to need geometry for your architecture. Mm, oh. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah. Because you're not doing architecture. Because I was not the student that would ever have done architecture. Okay. That they would have been like, oh, I don't think that's what we're going to push you towards, Kate. But then your guidance counselor did say, hey, go learn some parallelograms. No, they were like, take geometry because you need a math credit. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Here's something you'll never use. Go get after it. It sounds really uh, poo-poo on the education system right now. That's not what I mean. I just feel like there should be more focus on things that we're going to use for our entire lives. For every person, basically. Yes. That's more universal. Like most people need to be able to manage money at some point in their lives. Correct. But not most people necessarily need to draw a rhombus. Uh huh. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. I, I put that on a bumper sticker, please. <laughs> yeah. Not everybody <laughs> needs to draw a rhombus. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see that. Matt, I was reading an article about a woman in South Dakota, and uh, she was bringing brownies to a card game at a local senior center. She just didn't know that they were illegal brownies. How'd she how'd she mess that up? Well, her son baked the brownies. Oh, 
and she saw them on the counter. She's like, oh, good. I need these for a card game. I'll make a batch when I come back. And uh, the patients at the senior center suffered side effects from the brownies. (laughs) And her son was arrested for possession of a controlled substance. Yikes. How bad were they, quote, suffering? You know? Uh, It does not say. But, I mean, can't be that much. Maybe they just ate all the chips in the joint. Or they're just all uncontrollably giggling or something. I don't right. Know. There was a long line to Taco Bell afterwards. Long line to Taco Bell. <laughs> uh, at least there's a senior center in like a nursing home, right? Right. And that's what I couldn't stop thinking about was, okay, senior center is not a nursing home. So maybe yeah. if she was like, hey, I got something fun for our card game. <laughs> My son's going to get arrested over it, but we're going to have a great time. I bet you some of those seniors were pretty pleased. I think they were too relaxed to care. Yeah. People that hang out at the senior center are stoners, I think. Don't you think? <laughs> Is that a good conclusion to jump to? I'm not jumping to that one. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. M- me neither. Just joking. <laughs> but it seems like a place maybe some potheads might, might hang out. I just picture like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo working at a senior center. I'm like, right, is that really where he's working? Maybe. Maybe. Senior center, again, different from a nursing home. It's right. not like they're sharing pills. Point taken. Yeah. Yeah. I have to keep reminding myself, though. Senior center. Not nursing home. That's where they go to play bingo, not where they go to get their diaper changed. Right. little social action there. That's right. Playing cards and hanging out and doing pot brownies. That's what they do. <laughs> In South Dakota. <laughs> In South Dakota, of course. Where else? Well, what else is there to do in South Dakota? I can't think of a thing. I'm just kidding. I hear it's nice to go outside there from time to time. Yeah. (laughs) You could go see Mount Rushmore, I guess. Yeah. Then swing by the Senior Center. Like it's kind of underwhelming in size is what I've heard when you're there in person. Uh, We've never been there. We've talked about it, but I'm like, once you see the faces, what else is there to do? I mean, is it like a tourist attraction town? Like... Do they have stuff to do? You can probably get like a little keychain that has a little 3D print model of the of the, <laughs> mon- the monument there. Probably. Probably. You could do that. Okay. So uh, entertaining things to do, Matt. I mean, after you see the faces. You don't find keychains entertaining? No. <laughs> Come on, Matt. You know you've got a better idea of entertainment. No, you're right. And I, I wouldn't be the only keychain. I Let's see. I've got keys on my keychain. I've got a bottle opener. That's yeah. it. No monuments. I've got a carabiner and a bottle opener. No miniature spoons. Oh, yeah, this bottle opener also works as a flathead screwdriver. And it's actually got, oh, little, nice. it's actually got little, little stops in it. And the part that connects to the, the loop that allows you to... Like undo like a like a small nut. Watch your mouth when you're talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> I had a feeling I was walking into a trap there. I didn't even start it. That was not walking into a trap. That was just you going. Me walking off of a <laughs> cliff. Okay. Yeah. No, I do have my, I have a bottle opener, carabiner, and uh, our family coat of arms. But that's all I've got on oh. my keychain. Yeah. Uh, i got to look up carabiner because I forget what that is. It's like that hooky thing that people who like rock climb or something, they need it to hold ropes. Oh, yeah. Right. And you could clip yeah. it to your belt loop if you wanted to. I could clip it to my belt loop if I wanted to. You should do that. <laughs> I don't. Back in the day, I used to hook it to my shoe when I would run outside. Oh. So I could have my keys on my shoe. Oh, okay. And I have to hold my keys. Yeah. It sounds like they'd be bouncing around a bunch. You, get, you just secured it pretty tight. Mm, you tuck it in. Okay. Yeah. What about getting a belt clip for your phone? Well. that's That's got to be in style again, right? <laughs> it's not for me. It might be for some. Yeah. Put a belt clip on your mom jeans. Call it good. Right. Not even like a belt clip, like one of those uh, attachments where it like hooks on and you can unhook it. Yeah, quick release. 
Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One like that. I think that'd be funny. I mean, I did have a pager back in the day, but... Did you really? I did. All right. You should have mentioned that when we were talking about the uh, the drugs earlier. Were you dealing, Kate? I was not. My dad worked for the phone company. Oh. And this is in high school. It was like, you know, the... Not everybody had a cell phone at this point. My parents had a cell phone, but it was like, oh, I'm leaving the house. Who's taking the phone? It wasn't like you take the phone with you. You know, the phone in the bag. <laughs> yeah. Bring the bag phone. Yeah. Yeah. But I had a pager because that's how my parents could say they could not keep track of me. But if they paged me, I had to call them and be like, I'm at so-and-so's house, just like I told you I would be most times. <laughs> most times. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys paged me? I didn't get it. That's really weird. Never had a pager. I didn't have my first phone until my freshman year of college. Oh, look at you, fancy pants. When I was working at Radio Shack, I got a good deal. Oh, well, that, yeah. There you go. Yep. It's pretty sweet. I got my first phone senior year of college. But you had the pager for the preceding three years, right? No, just in high school. Oh, like we need that back now. Yeah, we don't care. We don't care about your location anymore. Yeah, you're you're up with the nuns. You're safe. Up with the nuns. Whoop whoop. LV, what? I feel like I should have a response to that. Is there a response? Like, is I, that... I, mm, it's not really a cheer. It's just you know, okay. LV, what? Yeah. It would be one thing if I was like, Matt, LV, and then you'd say, what? <laughs> that's right. I guess maybe we'll have to work on that. Yeah. I don't think that's how they say it, though. But, I mean, we could try it out sometime. Who? People in Leavenworth. The Leavenworth types? This is a common thing? Yeah. I know that I'm a creative individual, and I've got my quirks, but I this is not a Kate original. Well, it could have been, like, in your friends group or something. No. And you got to do the hands? Where you've got the L, and then you've got your middle finger to form a V. Mm -hmm. A V, what? And put it against your forehead, yeah. No. Okay. It was a typical Johnson County response. Wow. <laughs> Don't wow, you went there. How? And put it against your forehead. God, you loser from Leavenworth. Not from Leavenworth. I, 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 that's not what I was trying to say at all. Liar. <laughs> Conclusion jump much? Dig. 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 Bet. Come on. Oh my gosh. Do you remember any more of the slang that we learned a while back that the kids are using? Yeah, but how does that apply? Bet. I'm trying to get something that applies to this conversation. I forget all the other ones other than bet at the moment, though. Okay. Sus. For real. Stop acting so sus over there. Oh, so sus. There you go. Whew. That's close. Got it. Matt, do you light a lot of candles at your house? Uh, from time to time. Yeah, uh, since I've reintroduced bath, ba baths, <laughs> baths, baths <laughs> into my life. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it then. Okay. Kill the lights and light a candle. What's your scent profile? I don't know. I don't know. I believe we had a brief conversation about candles a while back because there was some freak show candle that you had stumbled upon. Maybe it was like a sounds like me Halloween, like a pumpkin pie candle. I forget what it was, but I, I, I don't know what I had because I, I went through a long phase where I was not using them. So I've right. got two candles that do produce scent. One, maybe like a linen or something. OK, OK. And like that. the other one is some kind of, I don't know, cherry, strawberry, wow, something like that. OK, know. where do you fall on buying candles that have smells of food or flavors. Ah, uh, okay. I think apple pie works well. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Like, I don't think I would light some, like, pizza candle or something like that, I don't think. Okay. Uh, even though, like, I'm a big fan. But something on the sweet, like the apple pie or vanilla something? Yeah. Or... Yeah. Okay. A, a vanil vanilla's in the profile, yeah. Okay. You? Um. Well, I like more citrusy smells. Like, it just feels like more fresh. But around Christmas time, like winter, I like the Christmas tree yeah, smells, yeah. like mm -hmm. the balsam. Fancy. But I just uh, just read an article about Campbell's Soup is releasing a line of candles. 
And would you like <laughs> okay. to guess what their first candle that they are going with is supposed to smell like? Campbell soup. Oh, uh, uh, chicken noodle soup. That would have been my first guess as well. And I would have been. You would have been wrong. Okay. Their candle that they're launching with is supposed to smell like grilled cheese and tomato soup. Hmm. Hey. Right? Would that be good? Maybe. I don't know. Well, do you like grilled cheese tomato soup? I love grilled cheese tomato soup. It's pretty good. I've been meaning to watch this. There's this America's Test Kitchen episode about adults grilled cheese, and I've yet to watch. It's got all kinds of cheeses in there. I need to check that out. Yeah. See, when it gets too fancy, I'm out. No, you just want American cheese. I do. I like the way it melts. I like it with the butter and the salt and dip it in the soup. But I do like a little bit of a heartier tomato soup than just tomato soup. Like I like a tomato bisque. Oh, okay. Yeah. A thicker thicker soup. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Doesn't it though? Yeah. It just kind of feels like, I don't know. Back in the day when we were young, and that's what we'd eat on a really cold day or Friday in Lent. <laughs> right, exactly. I was going to say on a winter day, on a, on a nice chilly day like today. Grilled cheese tomato soup sounds like a plan. I guarantee at least one listener goes and gets grilled cheese tomato soup by virtue of us just mentioning it today. Where's a good place to go get a grilled cheese tomato soup? Oh, gosh. Um, hmm, I'm not familiar with any local joints that are really good. Maybe one of the coffee shops. Maybe. Oh, yeah. There you go. I bet you they'd have a better one than like Sonic. Or Panera or something like that. Oh, yeah. Panera's tomato soup, though, is killer. Is that right? It's real good. Maybe. I guess I did have that back when I worked close to a Panera. That's good. I was just right around the block. Huh. So grilled cheese, tomato soup, scented candle with the Campbell's brand. With the Campbell's brand. With this product and with similar products, how much of it is because, oh, we want to diversify our portfolio, like how we're making money here, or maybe we can fool the media into talking about us. Do you have any ideas? I think they could go either way. Like if Campbell's is trying to like get out of the novelty stuff like keychains or Andy Warhol, maybe they're like, oh, let's get into the home decor line. You want to know how much this candle is going to go for, though? Okay, um, I will guess that it is fourteen dollars. That would be a good guess, but because for a soup can, because it's a soup can candle, essentially it looks just like a a can of soup. Uh, but mm-hmm. it's twenty four dollars. Hmm, that's a lot for a candle. Yeah, I don't pay that much for candles. Yeah, that's too much. Nope. Yep. I'm not just spend that much money on items to cook grilled cheese and tomato soup. Right. Problem solved. Done. 